Welcome to another edition of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. And um, I see you have a T here on your yes. necklace. I would hope that you would have a K. And I know that your name is Tabitha, but I'm just saying. I do have a necklace with a K you and need... I have earrings with a K. Come on, you need to rock it more. I usually wear it on date night. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. We're so glad that you are tuning in to another edition of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. We're pumped to have you on here, man. We love you guys. We love the feedback that we're getting. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for all of your prayers. Thank you for your comments. We yes. don't want this just to be a monologue. Yes. It's our desire. And what do you think so far, you know, with our podcast and everything? I think that it's going so well. I think it has been really fun. Yeah. Um, I think it's doing what we set out to do. Yeah. Just to share our lives. Yeah. Um, we learn so much from other people. Yeah. You know, and if other people have gone before me and already experienced this, but yeah. they can come back and tell me, look, mm -hmm. let me tell you what to do. Yeah. One, two, three. I'm like, yes, thank you. Yeah. I will do this today. And sometimes I learn from people's failures even more than their successes. And so that's why we're doing life with Ken and Tabitha. Yeah. We don't want to just share the wins. We also want to share some of the losses. Right. In the hopes that you can pull out some principles that will bring you closer to God and closer to each other. If you enjoy our content, please hit the subscribe button. But also there is a bunch of contact information in the show notes. If you want to email us, ask questions, we'd love to hear from you. All right. Um, today, 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 um, today's segment is entitled Learning to Trust God, How to Let Go and Let God. Um, how do you think you do at trusting God? Mm, I think I do pretty well. Uh -huh. um, I'm not an expert, okay. you know, at it because there are situations where I feel like uh, I'd rather trust myself. God, I got this God. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need you right now. I know I can, I got this, you know, uh, that's not your normal flow though. I know, you know, and I know you're trying to be humble, but I've, you, you, you do pretty good at trusting God. Mm -hmm. it, what is the weakest area for you with trusting God? Um, the weakest area would be, is it health? Is it your future? Is it, um, safety? What, what is the area you feel more tempted to be in fear in or be like, man, it's just harder for me in this area to trust God? Mm -hmm. I would probably say with our kids, there are a lot of situations with kids in parenting. Uh -huh. You kind of you can't be like a helicopter mom, you know what I mean? And like. I'm here, I'm here, you know, I'm doing all these things for you. Like in parenting, you have to kind of trust God yeah. that I have given my children everything they need, the necessary tools to make the right decisions and do the right things. And I trust you, God, that even when they get out there, they're going to fail. They're going to make wrong decisions and do the wrong things. But I trust that you're going to catch them when they fall. Mm. I trust that your angels are okay. keeping them in all of their ways. Okay. I trust you, God, that every day they're going to come back home and okay. they'll be fine. So, you know, one of the reasons that I was really led to kind of do this podcast, I actually taught this message mm -hmm. and it's over on the Alive Church YouTube page. If you want to check out the whole teaching on it, mm -hmm. it was called Trusting God. Um, how to give up control. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm calling this trusting God because I just felt like this is huge. Yeah. And I taught that message at the beginning of the year as a foundation or a spiritual pace for the year. And I don't know when people are listening mm -hmm. or watching this, but no matter when you're watching this, trusting God is like the foundation in which all of the rest of your belief Ooh. and relationship with God has to be built on. Why do you think it's so important? Um, Did I ask you that already? Why is it important? I don't know if you asked me why it was important because okay, um, it's probably important because uh, if you don't have trust, I don't know what you have. If I mm. like if if I can't trust you, yeah, like, what do I have? I, right. I, you know, there's is there really a relationship? Well, here? every relationship that's healthy mm -hmm. is built on trust. Mm. And there are people who will say, well, I just don't. I don't trust people. I trust God, but I don't trust people. I'll mm -hmm. show you a person that's probably not living to their full potential mm. because the reason that I trust people is because I trust God yes. and I, I trust people as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm not just saying somebody off the street that I don't know. I'm just going to trust you with keys to my house. That's not what I'm talking right. about. I'm talking about people that I work with, people that I serve with, people that are close to my, my, my family, right. you. Um, our relationship is going to be built on trust. And you know what I've learned about trust is that trust can be built up slowly 
and lost quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's the challenging thing. There's been people who are in a marriage or relationship and they did something to break trust. And you can break down trust overnight Mm -hmm. that it took you 10 years to build. And that's why it's so important for us to kind of um, put a safeguard around trust and make sure to be trustworthy people. But all trust starts with us trusting God. I see you shaking your head. What are you thinking? Oh, I'm thinking of so much. Uh Um, I'm thinking of, you know, even in every relationship, Mm -hmm. you talked about like marriage, Mm -hmm. uh, like I trust you. Mm -hmm. Um, But is it that you you talked about the person who does say, well, I trust God, but I don't trust other people. Mm -hmm. But how can you, you know, I trust other people because I trust God. Right. It's that's not so much that I trust in right. other people. It's that I trust God. That's yeah. what causes me to have any ounce of trust and, toward anyone else. And as it relates to the importance of trust, um, every relationship, like I said, has a foundation of trust to be healthy. So if you're on a basketball team or a football team mm-hmm. and you don't trust your coach, you're not going to win any championships. If you are a quarterback and you don't trust your lineman to block for you, you're right. not going <laughs> to, there's a level of trust. If you are in a war and you don't trust your sergeant or your general mm-hmm. and you just do whatever you want to do, those relationships, trust is the glue that holds it all together. I, what was it? Was it five dysfunctions of a team by Patrick Lentioni yeah. that we read? And I think that mm-hmm. one of the dysfunctions of healthy mm-hmm. teams is that there's a lack of trust. Yeah. And I think we could go into why people don't trust. I believe that we live in a day and time where the seed of distrust is sowed by the enemy to diminish relationships. Mm. You know, I've had people come and work alongside of me and be a part of our church or even our leadership team. And um, they like us and they work with us, but don't really trust us. And really they limit how high they can go in our organization, in our church, and how much we can entrust them with because the seed of distrust is there. Mm. Maybe they had a bad experience at another church or they heard that some pastor did this and now what they do is they take their experience and they project that on this new relationship. Mm. And I don't know them, I don't know what they've been through, I don't know any other church or what any other pastor has done, but because the seed of distrust is there and they think they're protecting themselves but they're really hurting themselves. And all of that really is a lack of trust in God. So when we say, why is this so important? Because there is somebody that is listening to this right now that you have a big call on your life. God wants to use you in a mighty way, but you don't trust God yet. Mm. You don't trust God. You're not willing to put your weight on him yet. Mm. And that's where in the message, I really got into the difference between trust and faith. And I really wanted to figure out, is there a difference between trust and faith? Both of them um, kind of mean confidence, Mm -hmm. talking about trusting God, confidence in God. And I'm telling you, I didn't I wasn't able to find a big difference between trust and faith. They can be used interchangeably. Uh Having faith in God is trusting God. And when you trust God, you have faith in God. But there was like one little sliver of difference that I was able to find. Tell us. (laughs) Faith is a belief system Um, and trust is when you're willing to step out on what you say you believe. Mm -hmm. For example, you believe that the chair that you're sitting in right now will hold you. Yes. Trust is when you sit down in the chair and you put your weight on it. Mm. When we say that we're trusting God, we're not just saying that I believe he's a healer. I'm willing to put my weight on it. I believe in tithing. No, I'm willing to actually tithe. I believe in serving. A lot of people have a belief system, but they're not willing to put their weight on it. Trust is when I fall into the arms of God or into the plan of God, not just by what I say, but how I behave. Oh, that's good. And there's so many, I, I, when you said that immediately, I got this feeling of like, there's so many things that keep you from trusting Yeah. previous experiences, fear, right? you know, fear of being hurt, fear of being betrayed, yeah. fear of being taken advantage of, right. fear of failing. Mm. Um, and they can keep you from, um, trusting God. Yeah from putting your weight in it. Yeah, yeah. And I believe that's what God wants from us. Mm -hmm. I mean, my God, I don't know who decided to put it on the currency, but in God we trust. Mm. What a prophetic statement. What a powerful statement. What a profound statement. But what if that was like the MO of our lives? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, for me and my house, I want to be, I want to raise up. I want our family and our children 
that when heaven looks at us, they say, these people trust God. So good. We trust God. And I think that that's why we were willing to leave the business world and to get into ministry from Washington, D.C., all the way to Gainesville, Florida, is because I'm going to put my weight on it. Mm. I trust God. I believe that's why we've been able to move from Gainesville to expand into Orlando is because, listen, I'm going to put my weight on it. I'm going to trust mm-hmm. God. And I just believe there's somebody who is listening to us today that I don't know if it's in your finances, in your marriage, in your relationship, in your business life, in your career, that you need to put your weight on it and you need to trust God because he will not let you fall. So I can almost see like even as believers, we can go to church every Sunday and we can get to a point of comfortability yeah. to where we say, yes, I trust God mm-hmm. or yes, I believe this and I believe that. But have we, we've come to a level of comfort where we trusted him before to get to this level, mm-hmm. but are we still trusting him at the same level that we did mm-hmm. to get to where we are? Well, if you go at my definition, we had faith, but did we trust? Mm-hmm. And I know they're kind of interchangeable, but based upon what I'm saying, I hear you. There's a bunch of people that say, yeah, I believe God. Yeah, I believe God. Yeah, I believe God. But we don't see the action mm-hmm. that goes along with what you say you believe. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's just that's it. That's insane. You know, that's really good because there are a lot of people who are believing God for things. Yeah. Maybe it's goals. Maybe it's finances. Maybe it's health. Uh-huh you know, spiritual things, but they haven't seen these things manifest. Uh There's questions like, God, well, what am I doing? I'm, I'm fasting, I'm praying or whatever, but maybe the key is trust. Maybe you're saying, I believe, I believe, but you're not putting your weight in it. Here's a few scriptures that come to mind. Psalms 112 and seven, it says, they will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, Mm. trusting the Lord. I love it. It says that our heart should be steadfast, meaning that I'm not going to be moved with the opinions of people. I'm going to be steadfast and I'm mm-hmm. going to be trusting the Lord. But I love it says that uh, they will have no fear of bad news. No fear and I think news. many times we have fear of bad news, mm-hmm. the bad news of a recession, the bad news of inflation, mm-hmm. the bad news of I was just talking to a lady that um, she didn't want to go to the doctor because she felt that she might get a bad report. Mm-hmm. She didn't want to have the biopsy because there's a fear of bad news. Yes. And um, I don't think when we trust God, like, I don't care what the doctor says or what the report comes back. God, I'm going to trust you. Yeah. I'm going to trust that healing is mine. I'm going to trust that um, you're going to either deliver me from the fire or through the fire. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver me out of them. All oh, God, I trust you. Mm-hmm. I put my weight on it. It is. And it's and it's easier said than done. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember when I was going through chemotherapy, uh, I did have a moment where I didn't know if I could trust God. Like I, I felt um, so confused in this moment. I felt like, I mean, it was just a really, really hard time for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just honest. I went to God and I'm like, God, I don't know if I can trust you. Yeah. And this is what I said to the Lord. I was like, okay, well, I trusted you that I wouldn't get cancer. Yeah. Talk about it. But I have cancer now. Uh Uh-huh. So how can I trust you that you'll get me out of this? Mm -hmm. How can I trust you that your word says that you'll heal me, that you'll deliver me from destruction? How can I trust this? Because I trusted you that I wouldn't get it in the first place, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And that's popular. That's very common. And how did you work your way out of that? Um, What was your conclusion? A a couple of things. The first thing was this. The Lord, in that same setting that I was um, asking him this question, Mm -hmm. he spoke back to me. Mm -hmm. And he said, Tabitha, Mm -hmm. very lovingly, do you trust Ken? And I said, yeah, you know, like, absolutely. And he asked me again, like, no, do you trust him? Absolutely. I just, I trust him with anything. And he said, if Ken could cure your cancer, would he do it? Absolutely. He absolutely would. I know he would. And he said to me, you can trust me Mm -hmm. that I'm going to heal you Mm -hmm. and that I would do what I said. And it just sealed it for me. It just, it showed me like, oh, and what it did for me is that because you love me, Mm -hmm. I know that you love me. Mm -hmm. And in the moment I was thinking, well, God, do you love me? Do you even care? Mm -hmm. Can I trust you? Mm -hmm. And what it said to me was, yes, I love you. And you can trust me. If you can trust a man, how much more can I do? Wow. 
And then the revelation came to me that I said, because my concern was God, I believe that this wouldn't happen, yeah. um, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And yeah. the answer is it did not prosper. It right. was formed against you. The mm -hmm. cancer came, but it did not prosper because right. it's there no more. Yeah. And so God didn't deliver me from the fire. Like you just said, he delivered me through the fire. He didn't yeah. deliver me from cancer. Yeah but he delivered me through Man, it. Thank you for sharing that. That is so rich. I got to tell you, that's where I really learned to trust God as well. Mm -hmm. You know, when we went through our cancer battle, mm -hmm. um, and thank God that you're 18 months cancer free, Amen. and we're celebrating every single moment to God be all of the glory. But when we were going through that battle, it was hard for me. I was taking care of you. I was taking care of our three kids. I was running a church, multiple campuses in multiple cities. Mm -hmm. And um, I was still preaching the word. I was doing everything and had a lot of weight on me. And um, I went to my psychologist. I have a therapist who was a pastor for 20 years and then became a, a therapist. And now he just sees pastors only. And I went to him and I said, I just don't understand. I said, we've done everything right. You know, I said, um, we've lived for God for 20 years. And um, this is not to brag, but this is how I felt. I said, I haven't drank any alcohol in mm -hmm. 20 years, no drugs, 20 years, mm -hmm. no pornography, not even a little bit in 20 years, not even flirted with another woman in 20 years. I left my business to come to a city. I didn't know one person to start a church. I've left that city to come to another city to expand that church. I've done nothing but live fully for God. I just mm -hmm. don't understand why God would allow someone who lives for him to live righteous, who is filled with faith. I've prayed over people who have cancer and I've seen God heal before. And I, and at that point we were having communion daily. We were fasting. We were praying. I was doing everything in the natural. Mm -hmm. um, we were going to, you know, people, when it comes to cancer, they'll send you all kinds of um, remedies. You know, we'll just eat this dog food and just, you know, go out here and, you know, drink oil through your ear. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? They just like, here, do this and then make the cancer go away. <laughs> and we're doing everything we know to do naturally and spiritually but we still had this battle to go through. And my psychologist says you have two choices. Mm -hmm. You can either get bitter, you can get angry at God, mm. and you can act like the Bible isn't real and stop believing the Bible. Or you can put your palms up like this and say, nevertheless, Lord, I trust you. Wow. And he taught me a principle that I love to share with people around the world. This is the most impactful thing that somebody has ever shared with me as it relates to the impact that it's had on my life. I don't know if it was the season or what I needed to hear when I needed to hear it. It's called the palms up principle, mm -hmm. meaning that when you're going through something in life that seems unfair, it's almost like the Bible says this, but you got that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the Bible says that we're healed by the stripes of Jesus. Yes. The scripture says that if we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. It is not a suggestion. Mm -hmm. It is a promise. But I wasn't seeing that promise manifest itself for me. I can get bitter or angry or I can do the palms of principle and say, nevertheless, Lord, I trust you. Yes. And what I learned in the darkest moment of my life is that the highest form of my faith is not just prophesying. And not just declaring and decreeing and using the authority that I'm supposed to use to see God do what I want him to do when I want him to do it. The highest form of my faith is actually trust. Isn't that something? It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, you know, you've shared that with me and I use that a lot now. And I used it even, you know, in the uh, finishing the cancel battle, the cancer battle. Yeah. Um, it's just. Yeah. And somebody needs to hear that today because you're facing something and you're like, where's God? I'm not yeah. sure. I know he's good. I know that his word is forever settled in heaven. Yeah. But maybe this is a thing about trust for you. Cause mm -hmm. for me, it was about trust. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that God would fight the battle with us. Mm -hmm. Like I know, man, this is ugly. This is chemotherapy. This is radiation. This is double mastectomy. This is my life. This is everything that we've built. We don't have a Ken and Tabitha podcast without a Tabitha. But God, I trust you. Yeah. And it's something about when you come to the place of trust, everything else from that point, yeah. he's been able to build off of. And I think, you know, through experience, the hardest time to trust God is in the wait. Yeah. It's in the waiting. And you talked a little bit about like seed time uh -huh. and then harvest. Yeah. And it's in that period of time. Mm -hmm. That's when it's hardest to trust God mm -hmm. when you're waiting yeah. for the manifestation mm -hmm. Um, of what you've been believing for mm -hmm. or the manifestation of your faith. Mm -hmm. And um, you said something else that really was so good to me to help 
talking about the outcome, yeah. trusting that he's the God of the outcome. Can you talk a little bit about that? Cause I, yeah. do you, it was like, go ahead. <laughs> do you want me to talk about it? I, I'm trying to remember it, but it's so good. You say it. Okay. Um, well, this has to do with letting go and letting God, mm -hmm. and it has to do with trust. And when it comes to harvest or the outcome, we are not the God of the outcome. God is the God of the outcome. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm an Enneagram three. That means I'm an achiever, and I love to control the outcome. I love to work for a goal or to achieve something. I love to, uh, I just like to control. Uh -huh. I don't know about you, I like to control everything around me. <laughs> I do too, yeah, actually. I like to control the pace in which traffic is flowing. Uh -huh. It can be raining, I'll come outside my house uh and speak to the clouds. <laughs> clouds, I command you in the name of Jesus to leave and sun come out, I like to control I'm the I'm number weather. one, the perfectionist. Oh yeah, to, you know, yeah so we're wrecking I'm shop just together. like, look here, <laughs> everybody basically, do what I say. <laughs> yeah, basically, I want what I want, how I want it, right? <laughs> But what I've realized, and I actually got this from my psychologist, is that you have to release the outcome to the mm -hmm. Lord. And so God is the God of the outcome. He calls himself the Lord of the harvest. And so he's the Lord of the manifestation. Yeah. He's the Lord of the outcome. He's the Lord of the harvest. I'm the Lord of the seed. Mm -hmm. He's the Lord of the harvest, but I'm the Lord of the seed. Now that's mm -hmm. what just totally spoke to me in the moment and changed my perspective. Because uh -huh. for someone who likes the control, uh -huh. Okay, God, I can control my seed. Right. I can't control the harvest, uh -huh. but best believe I'm going to sow some seed toward the harvest that I want. I'm glad you're getting excited. Okay. Yes, that yeah. makes me excited. Yeah. And I like to say the word Lord because I want to yeah. catch people's attention. He's the Lord of the harvest, but I'm the Lord of the seed. Mm. And when I say Lord, that word means master, ruler, and controller. Mm -hmm. And here's the revelation. I do not control the harvest. I cannot tell you when you're going to be healed, how you're going to be healed, mm -hmm. when it's going to come. I believe by faith that you're going to be healed, but mm -hmm. he's the Lord of the harvest. I'm the Lord of the seed. All I can do is I can sow seeds. Yes. All right. I'm the Lord. I'm the master ruler and controller of the seed, not the harvest. Mm -hmm. And so God doesn't have control of the seed. He gives it to us. We relinquish control of the harvest because it's in his time and in his ways because he's sovereign. Mm -hmm. But he gives us the authority to control the seed. Mm -hmm. And if you sow to your flesh, you'll reap. Wow death and destruction. But if you sow towards your spirit, you'll reap life everlasting. I cannot control the harvest, but I can control the seed. So when I sow the word of God in my heart and I do spiritual things, I am controlling the manifestation of the peace of God that I want in my life. Whether it be a financial principle or the principle that I just shared, I am the God. I am the Lord, not the God. I am the Lord. I'm the controller. Let's put it like that. <laughs> I am the controller of the seed mm. and I'm standing in faith, trusting him for his time when he wants to bring a harvest. So when you feel <laughs> like if you're in that period of time, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So like when I was going through chemotherapy, I had to trust God. Yeah. You had to trust God that yeah. he's the Lord of the outcome. Because we didn't have nothing else we could do. Exactly. Like we, it's not like I can come here and beat over the doctor's head and take the chemotherapy and make stuff go away. We had to go through the process. We this. had to go through the process. But in the process, yeah. the only thing that we had control over was our seed. Yeah different kinds of seed, money seed, uh -huh. so so um, money seed. Yeah. There was our the seed of our, our words, words and the positive confessions this, and the declarations. The seed of the meditation of the word of God, yes. which is being sown into the ground of our heart to produce a, a yes. hunt, not 30, not 60, but a hundredfold return. Yes. The seeds. The seed of our actions, how we took communion, yeah. how we maybe anointed ourselves with oil, uh -huh. how we prayed around our house and our property. Like these were all things that we had control of. Mm -hmm. Life and death is in the power of our tongue. So yeah. what we spoke, what we put in our ears, what yeah. we, you know, let ourselves watch, yeah. like all of these things yeah. we had control of. Yeah. I don't have control over the harvest and I don't have control over the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So it's seed, it's time and it's harvest. And most people get weary and they faint because of the time. Yeah. Because they do not know when God's going to do it. And they start to like, I don't know if I can trust him to do it. Yeah. And so in that moment between seed and harvest is when you have victory or you lose. Absolutely. You know, and so here's another scripture, Isaiah 26 and three, it says, you will keep him in perfect peace mm -hmm. when his mind is stayed on you. And, oh, it doesn't stop there because he trusts you. Because he will keep you in perfect you. peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. And I, I really believe that our perfect peace and trust in God 
are divinely connected, mm. you know, and the challenge is to keep our mind stayed on him yeah. because in an information age, Satan wants to use everything that he can to pull our attention and focus off of Jesus. But if we can keep our mind stayed on him and trust in God, like I'm putting my weight on it, God, you got me. I don't have a plan B to some things. He's going to keep us in perfect peace, mm -hmm. not just peace, but I don't even know what that is. Perfect peace. perfect peace. I believe it only comes from those who love Jesus and can tap into this spiritual principle. You don't find peace in yeah. the drugs, the alcohol, pornography, or anywhere else. That's a false peace. Yeah. This is a peace from Jehovah Shalom, who is the yeah. God of peace. Well, there's another place in the Bible where Jesus says, my peace I give unto you. So this, this perfect peace, this is like, it's actually like, this isn't just like, something that you picked up at Target or Walmart. This is something <laughs> from Jesus. Yeah. This is his thing that he possesses and he gives it to it's us. It's the shalom of God. It is the supernatural, uh, magnificent rest of mm. God. It is the peace that passes understanding. It is the peace that the world is looking for in all of the wrong places, but only comes with Jesus for he is the giver of this peace mm -hmm. and it is available for all of us. It's the peace that kept us through our battles. Amen. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't fear any evil yes. for his rod and staff. It comforts me. He gives me comfort. He gives me peace in the midst of chaos and darkness and death. It's an amazing thing. And so it's available good. for all of us. You know, Psalms 118 and eight, it says it's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in people. Mm. And it reminds me of what we were talking about in the beginning, that many people have people issues and uh, we're people too. And people aren't perfect, but they are creations of God. And, um, you know, over the years, I've kind of learned to trust people as unto the Lord mm -hmm. because it's so important for me to have the quality of life I need. Man, my God, I mean, I work with a team of people, I have leaders all around me, and I can't just look at them out of a skeptical lens. Like, yeah. what if they betray me? What if they are Judas? What if they backstab me? What if they're doing something over here? I have to trust God enough to trust the people that are Absolutely. in my life. And so, of course, it's better to trust in the Lord than to trust in people. But when you really trust in the Lord, part of that is that you're going to extend some trust to some people in your life. Mm -hmm. You believe that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we have to trust the doctor that we go to. Yeah. You know, you're going to trust your dentist. Yeah. You trust the cashier that she's going to give you the proper change back. Yeah. I mean, you, there's tr you trust your Uber driver. Yeah. <laughs> you trust your teachers at school, the but bus I want drivers. To trust their spiritual leaders. Yeah. And I believe that Satan works overtime to mm -hmm. make the parishioners distrust the pastors. Mm. And maybe it's because they've seen popular pastors fall. Yeah. Whether it be the breakup of a marriage or whether it be um, something sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. But if we were honest, we only know a handful of those people. Right. What I mean by that is that I know pastors around the world, Africa, Australia, India. Yeah. Russia, I mean, around the world, thousands of pastors. And off the top of my head, I, I cannot right now name one that I know personally that has been involved in sexual immorality, the stealing of money or something mm -hmm. like that. Now, I think we all know a couple of popular ones who have had to give up their ministry because yeah. of some moral we failures. We can name pastors who over the years and throughout the whole world, we all can give these examples. But do you know how many pastors there are? I'm talking about if I go through my spiritual the world. Listen, if I go through my spiritual Rolodex and I go way back 50 years, I can probably name. I can probably name like five, six or seven uh -huh. of them through the world yeah. over the last 50 years. Yeah. And I didn't know any of them personally. Yeah. I'm talking about I know thousands of men and women of God mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. I know two or three of them that went through some things in their marriage. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about I know thousands mm -hmm. that have been people of integrity, people of character people of faithfulness, people that the gifts of the spirit are flowing through, people that have given up their life for the Amen. gospel. It would be so sad to take what you're watching on. What are these shows that are doing these documentaries nowadays? I don't know. These shows come up with these documentaries. It would be so sad for you to go watch a documentary or you to hear about the moral failure of a handful of people and just throw the church away, the government away, elders away, yeah. pastors, apostles, and prophets, 
And maybe it's easier because then we can just do whatever we want to do, but it won't be beneficial for it, us. It doesn't make sense. And it doesn't make sense in any every other area of life. It's just like, okay, that doctor didn't know what they, that doctor was the worst doctor ever. That's it. I'm never going to a doctor again. I'm never going to a dentist again. That's it. I'm never eating at another restaurant because this restaurant was terrible. Nobody you does it anywhere don't. else. But why do we do that in the church? Why do people do that in church? I don't know. The, the, the church. Uh, I, I, maybe it's because they, they had such high expectations. Mm -hmm. You would think the man of God and the yeah. woman of God that preached this wouldn't fall yeah. so hard. And but truthfully, they're human beings. They're human. And because they're human beings, there's going to be a percentage of error. people get hurt. You know, yeah. people get hurt. But you know what I found out? I don't expect my pastor to be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I expect them to have a human side to them. But but I still trust my pastor, even in his imperfections, mm -hmm. because I trust God. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're talking about today. And really, when a person says, well, I don't know about the church and I don't know about Le and I don't I believe in unorganized religion. What army is unorganized? What team is unorganized? God what, is organized. What company is unorganized? God what created the about? earth. Everything's organized. Everything's in the organized. Earth. The tide is organized. The yes. sun, uh, the, yes. the seasons yes. are There's organized. Our God is a God of order and he has an order for his people. Mm -hmm. Really, if we were honest, we just don't trust God enough to trust people any longer. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that if we can raise the bar and say, you know what, I'm going to put my weight on it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to church. Yeah. I'm going to put my weight in God. I'm going to trust God that if you do have me in things that are incorrect, you're going to show me or you're going to protect me. Absolutely. That's how much I trust God. God speaks to you. He'll tell you if this, you know, yeah. leave, go to another church. Yeah. Find a, a pastor that you can trust. See one that has fruit in their life, mm -hmm. that's been doing it for a while. and that Listen, have integrity, if I lived in character. a city, this is how much I believe in church uh -huh. and being a part of the Talk body of Christ. Yes, ma'am. If I lived in a whole, my entire city and surrounding cities, mm -hmm. and I believed that there was not one church that I could go to, mm -hmm. Because all of the pastors are crazy. I would move to, I would pick up my family and move to another city yeah. where I could find a body of Christ that I can serve, yeah. give my time, treasure, and talents to. Come where on. I can, yeah, where have I have community. to get, be fed and build other people up. Something that I can serve and be a part of. I yeah. would move my family uh -huh. and find a new job. Well, I think that people don't understand how important the local church is. That's, yeah, there's power in it. Let me tell you, people ask me all the time, um, you know, they move from city to city because of a job. And, um, hey, you can do that if you want to. But if you were to really ask me, Pastor Ken, how do you think I should order my steps? I would say find a church and then build your life around it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say go to a job because you can lose a job and then be in a city that you ain't yep. supposed to be in. A lot of people are going from here to there because of a job. Mm -hmm. And what I say, find the church. Because the Bible says it this way in 1 Corinthians 12, I place the members in the body as it pleases me. Mm. And when you find the place that he sets you in the body, he places you in the body. Yes. Find a job there. Go to school there. Find relationships there. Because in that place, there's a certain brook Elijah was sustained at. Mm -hmm. It was a certain um, a certain prophet that Elisha couldn't connect. There was 6,000 other prophets, but there was an anointing on Elijah right. that Elisha needed to be who he had called him to be. And if you could start to put a value on the right place at the right time with the right people, build your life from that. Come on. Your life will be more fulfilled. Mm -hmm. It all starts with trusting God. Can I give what I consider to be the key of how to trust God? Are you Absolutely. ready? Absolutely. You got to give up control. Ooh. Do I got any control freaks that are listening to this podcast and watching this online right now? Please talk to me in the comment section because this is for me. I like to control everything. But if you want to trust God, you have to be willing to let go and let God. You got to be willing to put your palms up. You got to be yep. willing to give up control. When I say that, what, what comes to your mind? Ooh, um. You know, it, it kind of makes me take a deep breath, you know, like, OK, um, there are so many things that just let's just in general controlling your day. Yeah. Like I have a plan for my day. Yeah. You know, I'm going to wake up at this time. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to spend time with God. I got to get the kids to school by seven. That's all by eight. That's all by eight o'clock. Yeah. And then, you know, OK, I'm going to get to work. I'm going to do this. I got this assignment. I got to make this phone call. Uh -huh. I'm going to squeeze this in. It's like this is like. I, I want to control my day. I yeah. want to do all of these things. And then I want to ask God to bless it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. God, you know, bless yeah. it. But I think giving up control is kind of like, uh, like 
okay, I'm planning all of this and I know you've given me power and dominion and authority in the earth, but ultimately God, mm, I, if, if you want to wreck my day and change it all, uh -huh. you can do it. Now, I give you permission. That to, is a choice that you've made. Yes. And we hope that other people have made that choice. Mm -hmm. But if we're honest, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Most of us are driving the car of our life and Jesus in the back seat. Mm. Some of us have put Jesus in the passenger seat and we might ask him for directions every once in a while. But I know what career I want to go to. I know what college I want to go to. Yeah. I know. Come on. When I want to have That's babies, what I was saying. Before, have, like, God, I got this. A, yeah. Yeah. Right I know what I want. I, I made my I list. This is what I want. And mm -hmm. then we want to put the God stamp on it and mm -hmm. say, well, God said and God ain't really said. We just put the God stamp on it so that it can kind of suffice our subconscious lack of control. But really what it means to give up control is saying, you know what, Jesus, you take the wheel. I'm going to get in the passenger seat and mm -hmm. you drive my life. And truthfully, there's many people that have been driving. You, you got, you're in the, the driver's seat and you've been wrecking everything. And mm -hmm. it's time for you to let Jesus take the wheel. And I would suggest don't even get in the passenger seat. You need to get some people need to get in the back seat and just <laughs> let Jesus drive you anonymously because you would mess the whole just thing up. Just sit back there just and be sit quiet. sit back <laughs> like an Uber driver. You put in the coordinations, the desires of your heart, and then let him take whatever route he wants to take to get you to the final destination. Mm. And that's what trust is. That's so it's good. It's the ability to give up control, to let go, and to let God. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that if we can make a choice to do that, God will begin to add on to us because it's all built on trust. I hope you enjoyed today, man. We got to get out of here. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's uh, broadcast, um, learning to trust God. If you did, please let us know. Comment below. Subscribe right now. Jump on our email if you have any questions at all. Our hope is to bring you valuable content that can help you grow closer to God and to the people that are in your life. We want to do life with you. Just know that you're not alone. We're going to give you everything we possibly can to help you be everything Amen. God's called you to be. A new show will come out every Tuesday and Thursday. We hope to see you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's broadcast. We'll see you real soon. Peace. Peace.